Hey guys, Simon here from Buff The Spot, and today I've got another video for you guys, and we're gonna be having a look at a couple of the biggest pots that I played last month in July. Uh, gonna be doing a bit of a hand review, a bit of a pot, look into Pyo as well, see how they would have been played in theory, talk about some adjustments I might, might have made myself, um, and it should be a bit of fun, a couple of big pots in there. Now, before I jump into the action, I wanna let you guys know that we still have Jimmy DeRade's tips for crushing three bet pots. Uh, this is free, about, available for everyone, and I really recommend you guys ch go check it out. It's just in the description below, so go have a look, check it out, uh, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's have a look at a couple of these hands, um, and let's do a bit of a hand review. Now, the first hand we've got today is gonna to be played at 510. Um, we're in the uh, button with uh, King, Queen of Clubs, um, and we're gonna be playing a three bet pot here. So we open it up to two and a half X, which is pretty standard. And you can see we're a little bit deeper here, we're about 1200. Um, and we get three bet from the small blind, pretty reasonable size in here. Um, and I've played about 29 hands with this guy and he seems on the aggressive side of things, but you know, nothing out of the ordinary. This could still be a reg, but you know, we're definitely thinking he might be a little bit more aggressive than usual. Now, we are just gonna call here. Uh, we're not gonna play a four bet with King Queen suited here, plays very well in position um, in a three bet pot. Um, if we were in like maybe, you know, MP or under the gun, we might be, consider four betting it sometimes. Um, and if we had like, you know, King Queen off, we might also consider four betting it because it doesn't play as well because it's not suited. Here though, we're just always making the call uh, and we're gonna go see a flop. Um, the flop here is 10-10-3. Um, and you'll see here that we actually don't have any of the suits on the board. So we don't have the backdoor flush draw, but we do have two overs here. And we face a one third bet. And this is a spot that is quite often overfolded by the imposition player. Um, you know, we actually don't have a ton of pairs on these boards. So we actually need to start defending pretty wide. Um, and if we actually have a think about it, King Queen here with two overs is actually a pretty good defend. Now, obviously we would prefer to have hearts, spades, diamonds. But if we actually have a look, and I've run this one through a sim, um, we'll actually see that this hand still is defending quite a lot of the time. Um, so I've got my tree here. Uh, I'm gonna bring this across. Um, and we see here, I've got given them like, you know, the small bet sides, because that's what we faced. Um, and we'll see here, King Queen um, is actually always defending. So it's pretty important to find these defends. And one of the things we quite like is we actually prefer to defend with two overs and no backdoor flush draw. than we do with like, you know, two over, with it one over, and a backdoor flush draw. So we can see here that the overs are quite important. Um, and so this is one of those things um, when we are defending here, um, it's a little bit of a heuristic that in three bet pots in position, we do like to defend with overs. So we make the defense here with uh, King Queen, which is you know pretty standard. And we now get this five of clubs turn and we face a check. And now we have to consider what we wanna do. Now we're gonna have a bunch of 10X here that didn't raise the flop. We're gonna have a bunch of pairs that wanna bet for protection, something like, you know, sevens, eights, nines, even like, you know, we're gonna have jacks and queens here quite a bit as well. Um, and we've gotta think about what kind of bluffs we want. Now, because the board has now become rainbow, we're not actually gonna have a lot of like, you know, natural bluffs. We're not gonna have many gut shots. We're gonna have some like, you know, ace four, maybe some ace deuce, cause they're a little bit deeper. Um, and maybe some things like, you know, six, seven, um, if we had like, you know, six, seven of diamonds that floated the flop, though that would be pretty wide. Um, so we've got to think about what hands we want to bluff. And having clubs here is actually really, really good. This is one of those um, times where this suit is actually favorable for us. And the reason for that is, is that we think about what kind of hands that he's going to see bet the flop with and check the turn. A lot of the time, these are going to be like, you know, over cards, like, you know, uh, ace, queen, king, queen with like diamonds, with spades, um, that don't pick up additional equity and now have to check the turn. Whereas if he had something like king, queen of clubs himself, this is actually a hand that makes a pretty good barrel for him. He actually blocks like, you know, king 10, queen 10 of um, like uh, of the trips. Um, and so it actually makes a pretty good uh, hand to barrel. And he also unblocks, um, you know, our floats. So in a spot like this, you know, it, we, we often float with like, you know, diamonds, spades and hearts. When he has clubs, he makes it more likely that we have that and his barrel is gonna be more successful. So if we actually have a look at the sim over here and I'll bring this back and we call uh, and we get the five of, what was it? The five of clubs. We actually see here that King Queen uh, with clubs is actually one of his preferred barreling candidates. And so when we have King Queen with the clubs ourselves, this actually makes a really good hand to stab with. So when he checks, we'll actually see here King Queen with clubs is actually one of our most often hands to stab with. Um, and so in this spot, I decide to stab with King Queen. 
And we can see here from the, sol the solver that there's a couple of different sizings we could pick. We could go one third, we could go half pot. Um, both of those are fine, but in these spots, I just prefer to play something like one third and get to bed a bit a bit wider. So I'm actually going to quickly just adjust this tree for us um, because that's the strategy that I played in game. Uh, and this will give us a bit more of an accurate run out for like later streaks. So I'm going to quickly do that. Click go. And once I've done that, you can see here that uh, it goes check. Uh, and we can see King, Queen of Clubs is basically always betting. So I'm doing that all the time in game and we go for the one third stab. And we face the call. And now we get that eight, this eight of Clubs River and we've got to decide what we want to do. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can approach this. Um, we can think about, you know, what we want to do in theory, optimal. Um, and we can also decide to make a bit of an exploit here if we want. Now in this spot here, after it goes check call on the turn, I imagine he's got quite a lot of ace high and I imagine that King Queen doesn't actually have a lot of showdown. So I'm actually going to say that we've got like quite a lot of like 10x advantage um, and I'm actually expecting most people to overfold here. So in game, I'm actually just going to start bluffing my hand pretty much pure. But what about in like an, like, you know, an equilibrium setting? Now, does having like King Queen of Clubs actually make a really good hand to do this with? And I think it's still a really, really good hand. The fact that we block, you know, some of the traps in terms of maybe Kings, queens, maybe some 10x that he decided to trap. Um, I think this is like a really, really good candidate to do it with. Even something like, you know, having the king to block ace-king. Ace-king is going to have to call quite a lot. And if we think about the combos of ace-king that he wants to call us with, ace-king with the king of clubs is going to be a really good hand for him to have because it's going to block a lot of our trips that are jamming for value. So let's have a look at the, the, the sim that I've got here. So it goes small bet, call, and then we get the eight of clubs on the river. And it goes check. And we can see here that King Queen's actually mixing as a bluff. It's not doing it all the time. We actually prefer to bluff stuff like with like less showdown. King Queen actually has like, I mean, a smidge of showdown. It doesn't really have any, it's not really winning. But you know, this is a spot where the solver's going, okay, I can't bluff all of my hands that don't have showdown here. Because we have so much other stuff like, you know, Jack nine, Queen nine, um, that are even worse that prefer to bluff. But in game, I think that this is a spot that's pretty likely to be overfolded. And if we have a look at the jam size in here, we actually see that he doesn't actually have a ton of defense and he actually has to be defending really, really wide. He, he's meant to have trapped aces here quite a lot, which I expect a lot of people not to do. And he's going to have to still make quite a few calls here with you can see ace king with the king of clubs um, is like a really good one uh, to call with. So having the clubs is really good here. And we can see he's meant to find a quite a few calls here with like, you know, uh, these ace high like club combos. And he's actually meant to call quite a few of his pocket pairs. Um, and this actually re requires like, the, you know, the player to trap aces and tens. And if they're not doing this, it's pretty easy to see them to start overfolding. And we can start exploiting this um, by, you know, bluffing a little, a few more extra hands. In, in this case, you know, bluffing all of our king queen combos that stabbed the turn. So back to the hand and I decide that I'm going to rep a 10x and I go all in for value because I've got the clubs. Um, and we face a tank and we end up getting looked up and we get looked up by, um, actually, I don't think it was a tanking game. I think he just snapped us off with a boat. Um, and so we just ran into the top of his range here. Now, when we're reviewing this hand and it's a takeaway, it's really hard to say whether this exploit worked or not. Uh, we exploited by bluffing a little bit wider. We know this hand bluffs sometimes anyway, so it's not going to be a mistake. But when we're reviewing hands, it's important to think about what we got looked up with. Now, we ran into the top of his range and this doesn't really tell us a whole lot. I mean, this doesn't tell us whether the bluff is good or bad, but if we got looked up by something like, you know, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-nine, this is where I might start to think, okay, maybe this is a spot that isn't as, you know, overfolded as I thought, and maybe we need to rein in on our bluffs a little bit. But when we run into this, we go, okay, cool, that's just the top of his range. Doesn't mean the bluff was good or bad, we just lost the pot this time, um, and I think we can just move on to the next one. Alrighty, next hand I've got for you guys is going to be another fun one. Another one at 510. Uh, this is going to be a blind versus blind spot. So, we've got King Queen of Spades in the small blind and we open to 3x, which is pretty standard. And we face a call from the uh, big blind. Uh, we get all a flop of Jack 6-5 and this is an, quite an interesting flop. Now, there's a couple of different things you could do here. You could mix with a small bet. You could mix with a medium-ish bet. Um, but what I actually like to do is I like just to range bet for a really small sizing. I like to range bet for like a 15, uh, for a 25% sizing. And this means that out of position, I play a, sim a strategy that's really simple. It gets me to the turn quite often. And I know that I'm not going to be making a massive mistake. Um, we can have a look at the, uh, the sim here. Um, I've got this one here. And this is Jack 6-5. Um, and we can see here, I've just put in a range bet because that's my strategy in game. 
But we could also have a look at like, you know, how this uh, performs versus optimal. Uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Pyo. All right, so I've decided to range bet this in game and this is my range bet strategy. Um, and this is I think, the most important one to look at when we're reviewing hands is actually using the strategies that you think that you're playing and the strategies that your opponent's playing too. Now I don't have the exact same board. I've got Jack uh, six, four here. Um, and you can see here that, that you know, uh, it's actually mixing and there's quite a bit of checking going on, but the EV is like 29.36. Um, and we can see here, um, if we actually have a look at uh, a very similar board where that I've run it for just the um, small sizing. All right, so let's have a look at what, how this range bet performs. All right, all right, so on this Jack 6 5 board, I don't actually have the exact one to see uh, how well the range bet performs, but I've got a very similar board. I've got Jack 6 4. And so this is how it performs, like, you know, uh, if we gave it like multiple wet sizes and gave it the option to check. And we can see the EV here is 29.36. Um, and this is a board that I've run and tested a range bet on. And we can see that when we range bet, it's 28.95. So we see there's a bit of an EV loss, but the EV loss is only 0.4 of a chip. And 0.4 out of a chip in a 60 um, chip pot, it's not very much. It's less than 1%. And I think that range betting boards like this is gonna to be totally fine in game. And it's gonna keep your strategy a lot easier to play. So I think we can see the range bet's probably fine. Uh, we lose a touch of EV, but it makes our strategy easier to play. And the fact that we play it an easier strategy that we can uh, roll out and play you know, more accurately is gonna to lead to like an EV increase versus a mixed strategy that we don't play super well. So we decide to range bet the Jack 6-5 um, and we see why range betting is probably okay. Um, and in game, what do we face? Uh, we face a raise and we face this like, you know, 4X raise, a little bit over 4X raise. Now with the um, backdoor flush draw, we could consider doing a little bit of three bet in here, particularly since we block a lot of like the, the strong value hands. If we think about the hands that he's gonna be raising for value with, it's quite often gonna be like pocket sixes, six five, jack six. So having this six here is actually really, really good for blocking his value. So we could consider going for a little bit of a three bet, but in game, I just decided to play this as like basically a pure call. Um, and we can see here that if we have a look at the sim versus the raise, we can see that something like, you know, king six of spades sometimes goes for that three bet, but he's mostly playing as a call. So that's all good. We get to the turn and we face this two of hearts. We check and he continues barreling for, you know, a three quarter size. Now, we're not really in, in the spot to fold any pairs here. We still are ahead of all these bluffs. We block quite a lot of value. So I think this is just a pretty straightforward call. Um, and we can see here, if we have a look at the sim, uh, we get the two of hearts, it goes check, and they bet for the three quarter sizing. I'm actually just gonna rerun this real quickly and I'm just gonna give him only one sizing because this is what he played on the turn. And when we see this, this is one of these things that I like to do when I study is I like to put in the bet sizes that they play in game. I don't like to give them multiple bet sizes um, and you know make things tricky for ourselves. Um, it's really, really important that when we, when we do this is that we actually you know use the strategies that are actually doing in game. And this is what we're actually faced in game. And he's, we, we expect that most opponents are only playing single sizes. So I'm gonna run my Sims for the sizes that they use because it's gonna be more accurate for the strategy that they're playing. So we face this big bet and we can see King six here is just a pure call, nothing else to do. Um, so pretty straightforward. We see a little bit of folding, but I guess in game, I'm not really finding this. I'm just gonna call it all the time. And we can see that most of our pairs are just gonna, gonna, gonna continue as calls. So we make the call here with King six, uh, pretty standard and we face a river and we get this ace of spades on the river. And this is kind of an interesting card. Now, if we think about his value, yes, he could definitely have maybe some ace jack of like ace jack off. Um, but with, if we think about a lot of his value, a lot of his value is gonna be a little bit concerned now. If he had something like, you know, jack six, jack five, six five, maybe even something like five deuce, they're gonna be a little bit concerned of this ace. And that's because we're gonna improve to a bunch of two pairs on this river. We're gonna have all the ace six, all the ace five, even some ace deuce. Um, and we might even still have some ace jack if we didn't decide to three bet the flop. So in reality, a lot of these two pairs now are actually gonna be pretty scared of actually going for value. And when we face this jam, I actually think that this would be too light with a lot of these two pairs. And if we think about his main value combos here, they're actually gonna be pocket fives and pocket sixes. And having the six here is actually really, really important here. This actually blocks quite a lot of value. This really cuts down um, the amount of like, you know, he's now only got one combo of sixes that he could have for value. Um, he's obviously got like, you know, all of the pocket fives. Um, but apart from that, there's not really a whole lot else for value. And in game, I start to think about what makes more sense here. Is it more likely that he has one of these few value combos? 
And if we actually think about the board, the board is very dynamic. There's a lot of draws present on the flop. There's the flush draws, there's the multiple straight draws, the open enders, the gut shots, um, and they all brick by the river. All of these draws brick out. So this is actually a spot where it goes raise, bet, bet. And he, particularly when he uses this really big size and that I don't think that he's gonna use with all of his two pairs, that I think this is a line that's really heavily weighted towards bluffs. And because of this, I'm not too worried about my block, like, you know, about, I guess my blockers are important for blocking value, but I'm going to look, look to call this down pretty wide. I think that in game, like if we have a look at the solver, I think what we'll see is like, you know, these combos are mixing because they're like complete bluff catches at zero EV. But I think in game, this is a spot where I actually expect to see a ton more bluffs, um, particularly versus a reg that seems to be playing like relatively aggressively um, than they should be. And I think they're not going to give up with as many bluffs as they should. So I decided to make the call here. And before we have a look at the, result, the results, let's have a quick look at how it goes in the solver. So we call here and we get the ace of spades on the river. It goes check. Um, and we can see here, he's actually meant to be using quite a lot of these three quarter sizing. And this is so that he can value bet all of these two pairs. You can see here something like six five isn't strong enough to go for this jam. Um, you can see that ace jack is about, about the threshold, you know, jack six only gets to use like, you know, that medium sizing and you can see here the, um, the sets like get to go for it. And of course, something like a straight, like four, three gets to go for it too. So we, in this spot, I actually expect some people to play these multiple sizes, but we can see here that this really big sizing is like really, really weighted towards, you know, only the best two pairs. A six, um, gets in there a little bit too, but I don't think many people are going to have a six in this line either. So we face the jam and we can see here that king six is actually pretty much a pure call. And I think this is for a lot of the reasons that I discussed before in terms of how much of the value we block. We block sixes and I guess a six as well, um, which could go for value is really important here. And we also unblock a lot of the bluffs. Um, if we think about the things that he's gonna give up here, but he's gonna actually have to give up with a lot of like, you know, king high kind of stuff. You can see like, you know, king 10, king nine, king eight are giving up quite a lot. Uh, and you can see here, like, you know, these are the combos that he's actually going to end up giving up with quite a lot. And I think that in this spot, if we have a look at what's meant to give up, I think that most people aren't going to give up as much as they should. If we look at the nothing king high, nothing, no draws, you're actually meant to say, look at all this checking that's meant to go on with all of his bluffs. And I think this is quite unintuitive. People see that ace, people see that scare card, they go, okay, I think they've got a lot of jack X. I think they're going to fold the river. And this is a spot where I think we can look up people a lot more aggressively, particularly on such a dynamic board when the, a lot of these draws brick. I think people aren't giving up anywhere near enough, enough of these bluffs as they should. So we decide to make the call here with King six. Are we right? Let's have a look. And we run into King seven with the uh, seven of clubs. And this is one of those hands that we can see that our exploit was probably correct. If we have a look back at this sim that we looked at, we're actually probably going to see that this is actually a hand that's probably meant to give up the river. Um, we have a look here and we see king seven off with the seven of clubs. And this is meant to be majority checking. And this is like a pretty cool hand that he's found with the raise on the flop and he's barreled the turn with. And this is an example of seeing, you know, when we make a read in game that our read's actually correct. We saw that we thought that he might be over bluffing this spot and we see here he's like going with a combo that shouldn't be bluffing the river. So our exploit in over calling here, and if you're calling additional hands, like maybe, you know, some extra 5x, some extra 6x, maybe even some um, extra like jack x that's meant to be folding, that we're actually making an exploit that, you know, is probably gonna be profitable. Now one hand isn't enough to say, yep, for sure our read is correct. But when I'm doing a bit of a review like this and I see a hand like this, I go, cool. My thought process in game was I thought he's gonna be over bluffing with some combos like this. And when we see something like this, I go, cool. Looked like my read was at least correct in this spot. And if I see it a few more times, we can go with it more in future. So I thought this was a pretty interesting hand. We faced like a really, really big river jam uh, and we made the you know correct bluff catch with uh, third pair. Um, and it's always nice when they go your way. <laughs> All right, one last hand for you guys today. Um, and this is gonna be um, a deep stacked hand at two five. Um, we're gonna be playing three handed here. And this was actually in the zone pool. So we don't actually have any reads on our opponents. These things, you know, we get fresh hand every time, but we can see there's likely a fish in the small blind. And we've got like, you know, someone with a real, we were like almost 200 bigs deep. So I open pocket twos from the button. We face a three bet from the big blind and pocket twos are mostly gonna be calling here. Um, you know, we can hit a set, we get to play in position. So the pocket pairs like to play, like, like to basically call here, basically pure. Uh, there's a little bit of like reversed implied odds when we get this deep because the hitting a set isn't always as good because we can get done set over set. 
But again, um, you know, I think we're calling all of our pocket pairs here. We make the call and we get this flop, Queen Jack seven, and we face a check. And this is quite interesting here, what we decide to do. When we face this check here, we've got to think about what kind of like flop C bet strategy our opponent plays. And I actually expect quite a lot of people just to range bet boards like this. So when we see this, I'm expecting that our, like, you know, I'm ex I expect him to be a reg and I expect that he's probably going to be playing a big bet or check strategy. And when people play these strategies, their checks are going to be, you know, mostly second pair, weak top pairs, or maybe some hands like, you know, ace, king, ace, 10. So it's going to be hands that are like, you know, heavily weighted towards medium strength. Maybe some stuff like, you know, pocket tens, pocket nines as well. So against this range, what bet size makes the most sense? And I don't think this is quite a common mistake is to stab for the one third sizing. And I just don't think that sizing puts any pressure on their range. I think if we are gonna take a stab at a pot like this, we need to be sizing up. And then particularly since we're deep, I think half pot or three quarters makes the most amount of sense. Now I've had a look at this one in the solver. And if we have a look at it here, I've got this board, I've run it for the stack sizes. Um, and I've given him like, you know, multiple bet sizings on the flop here. Um, and we can see here that it's actually quite often a small sizing, but in game, he actually went for the big sizing. So I think uh, well, he went for, went for like, you know, the mixed strategy. So I think here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him the big sizing, uh, build tree, okay. And we're just gonna run it for the one big sizing because we want, we, he actually plays quite, a, he's played a checking game. So we wanna give him a strategy that, you know, um, you know, lets him check quite a bit. Alrighty, so the Sims run here and I've given him the, the, the big sizing strategy. And we can see here that we have a look at what it's checking. A lot of second pair here. Um, Ace King actually isn't checking a whole lot, but like, you know, tens, nines, uh, and a few traps like things like, you know, jacks and queens. Um, so when we actually have a look at the uh, our stabbing size, and we can actually see the most preferred stab sizing is an overbet. Uh, this or this is like three quarters sizing, and so this big sizing actually is actually the preferred stab sizing. Now in game, I preferred to play the 50% sizing because I'm a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, but I think that this is one of those spots where we can even probably size up a bit. I wouldn't even be surprised that, since we're deep if the overbet was actually preferred. But I didn't give the sim this option in this in this spot. Uh, in game, I go for the half pot stab here, and we can actually see that our low pocket pairs quite like to stab here. And this is because we don't often want to like bet with stuff like equity. Um, stuff like, you know, 10-9, for example, I mean, which does bet a bit, or even like, you know, uh, like ace-king, which we have. Um, we actually quite like to stab these low pocket pairs. And the reason for this is we unblock a lot of the folds. If we think about the hands that we're going to start to like get to fold, these low pocket pairs have a really cool property in the fact that we get him to fold all of his middle pocket pairs. Like, you know, his nines, tens, and his that. We're going to need to barrel him off that. And we also get worse hands to call. So we get to have like, you know, his hands like ace king, ace 10, um, with like back doors, maybe something like, you know, uh, an ace five. So we actually really like these low pocket pairs. They unblock a lot of the folds um, and we actually get, you know, um, you know, better hands to fold and worse hands to call, which is it was really, really cool. So I found like the stab here with the low pocket pair. I'm actually just gonna give this a quick rerun uh, for the sizing that I used in game. Um, so we can have a look at it a bit more accurately and we're just gonna go from there. Alrighty, so we've run this for the single sizing and we saw that, you know, we probably used, you know, probably the wrong sizing in game. I think the half pot sizing is probably fine, but I think like, you know, a bit of a bigger sizing to put a bit more pressure on him would probably be preferred. But we can see these low pocket pairs do like to stab. And so this is one of those things that I like to do, like to stab these low pocket pairs. And what we start to see is we start him to see him fold like, you know, tens, nines, eights. Um, and he still has to call with, you know, ace king, uh, you know, ace ten. Uh, and that's really what I was talking about. You know, he gets to, he has to like, you know, fold better hands and he has to call worse hands. And this is why we quite like, you know, turning these like low pocket pairs in these like three bet pots uh, into bluffs. So we go for this stab sizing uh, on the flop and we face a call and we get this king uh, uh, spades on the turn. And this is quite interesting. Now, obviously, you know, he has like his ace kings that are paired. He might have some two pairs like king jack. Um, and we've got to think about like, you know, on these triple broadways, it's pretty tough when we actually think about it to find bluffs. Now, we're not going to have like, you know, even that many open enders. Think about like, you know, all the 10x that we might have. A lot of it's going to be either like 10, 9, ace 10, or it's going to have a pair. It's going to be like jack 10 or queen 10, which we actually have quite a bit of showdown with. So this is a spot where I actually figure pocket twos after we get check cold here almost has no showdown. Um, and it's actually going to be a spot that across the, like the turn and the river, it's going to be really, really hard for us to find bluffs. And I don't think we're going to win with showdown very often. So this is a spot where I decided to go with it with pocket twos. Um, I thought the three quarter sizing was best because I think that in a spot like this, um, you know, when the straight's complete, he is going to have like, you know, a bunch of ace 10 himself. Um, so I thought the three quarter sizing would be best in game. 
And if we have a look at the sim over here um, that I've just run, uh, we'll see. Uh, so if we have a look at this sim that I've just run, when he calls and we get the, uh, what was it? It was the king of spades. And it goes check. We can see here the most common sizing is going to be this three-quarter sizing. Uh, and we can see here that these low pocket pairs quite like bluffing. Um, you know, we're going to have some ace-10, um, and but like, you know, it's really, really hard to actually find our bluffs. If we have a look at like, you know, our range, our absolutely nothing, you know, no draw, we really don't have any combos. You know, we have like, you know, a couple of like, you know, ace-high stuff that, you know, doesn't mind bluffing a little bit, a um, couple of gut shots. Um, and we only really have 10 8 as our open ender, so we have to be quite creative when it comes to finding bluffs. There just isn't that many combos of like absolutely nothing that we can bluff here on these triple broadways. And so this is a spot where we can see that stuff like our low pairs actually quite like bluffing. We quite like turning the, like, you know, some 7x and our low pocket pairs into bluffs because it's really, really hard to find bluffs on a board such as this. Now I'm going to give this a quick rerun uh, just for the sizing that I picked, uh, which was 75. But we can see that, you know, a few different bet sizes are used here. Uh, this is the most common one, and I think that's just because it's like, you know, a straight completing turn. Quite often when the straight's complete, uh, we don't like to use like an overbet. We like to use that three-quarters sizing. So we barrel our pocket twos. We face a call. And we get this seven on the river. Now, if we think about what's check called twice, I think that pocket twos is never going to win here. We already know that like, you know, even some of our bluffs on the turn were going to be like, you know, 7-6, which have now like made trips and are now value. But I think pocket two is like, he's never going to show up here with a, with a worst hand. So I think this is a pretty clear bluff, bluff on the river. Now, when we are thinking about bluffing the river here, I think when we do get check called twice, it is important to note that he's going to arrive on the river with a lot of bluff catches. He's going to have a lot of like jack 10, queen 10, uh, ace, maybe some ace jack, maybe ace king. So he's going to have quite a few combos here to call us with. Now, if we start to see ourselves get called by a few too many combos, um, maybe stuff like, you know, Jack, uh, like, you know, Queen 9 or something, hands that aren't, really shouldn't be calling and block our bluffs, this is a spot where maybe we do want to be giving up with our pocket twos because he is actually over calling. Because if we think about this triple Broadway board, he's going to have so many pairs here. Again, though, it's really, really tough to find the bluffs. And in game, I didn't really have a really strong read as to whether I think the opponent's going to overcall or overfold here. And I, I decided just to go for it with pocket twos. Now, if we have a look uh, at what's going on here, uh, it goes big bet on the turn, call, and we get the seven of diamonds on the river. It goes check. And we can see here our pocket twos are mixing. They don't mind bluffing. They don't mind like checking back sometimes. They don't really have any showdown, but it's just one of those things that they kind of want to remain balanced. So what's going to be important for me when I'm reviewing this hand is thinking about having a look at what hand calls me. If a hand that's a crystal clear call, um, you know, if he's got like a trap in terms of like queens, jacks, uh, kings or something, I'm not going to really lose any sleep about it. I'm going to go, cool, we ran into the top of his range. But if I start to see a hand like, you know, uh, maybe something like, you know, ace queen call me down, uh, something like jack 10 call me down, maybe even like if I start to see queen 10 or like, you know, stuff like this, I'm actually going to be a little bit concerned. And one of the reasons I don't love bluffing this spot is we're actually see, meant to see quite a few two pairs give up. Even like, you know, uh, king jack, queen jack are actually meant to be folding at a pretty high frequency here. And I expect most people when they do like have these two pairs are probably actually going to over defend versus this jam. So in game, we do make the jam and we end up getting looked up by aces. Okay. Now, when we see aces here, he's not really meant to have aces in this line. Um, and the reason for that is if we go back um, to the, uh, you know, to the flop, he's actually always meant to bet aces. So he doesn't really have aces here. Um, so it doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Now aces, if it did like, you know, uh, somehow get into this line, it's going to be a pretty clear call. Um, it blocks like ace 10. Um, it blocks a lot of the stuff that we're going to be checking back. So I don't think him having aces here tells us a whole lot. It does say that these people do have a few more traps than they should. Like aces, if it goes for the check on the flop, should check raise. Uh, it's never really played as a trap. Um, so I don't really know what to read into this a whole lot. Um, I think that having aces here is one of the strongest hands that he can probably have. Um, and I think that like, you know, we could actually also have something like, you know, king, queen for value here. So aces actually does block a bit of the value range as well. Um, it's actually like, you know, beat some of our value. So I think this is like, you know, not a hand that we can read a whole lot into. It is saying that the opponents in our pool are doing some funky stuff and they might have some extra traps in this line than we expect. But overall, I don't think this is a bad bluff. If we ran into something like, you know, queen 10, jack 10, I'd be a little bit more concerned the fact that we're like, you know, bluffing here. 
But I thought this was a really cool hand where we turn in like, you know, a low pocket pair into a bluff in a pretty deep pot. Uh, we end up losing, you know, the full like, you know, 200 bigs, which is obviously pretty rough, but I'm pretty happy with my thought decision, um, my thought making process throughout the hand. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of these hands? Do you think I played them well? Do you think I could have played them better? Um, and let me know what you thought of the hand review. A uh, bit of a new one, a little bit less like of a theory-based um, kind of uh, YouTube video. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and until next time, have fun, guys. Bye.